Hello guys and gals, and this is part four of War World of Warcraft, the official cookbook. And, uh, yeah. Again, always with the copyright information, this is a book by Chelsea Monroe Castle, and if there are any copyright issues with it being on YouTube, simply send a message to me on Gmail, and I will take it down the video instantly. Anyways, what we are going to do is... Oh, yeah, also World of Warcraft is copyright to Blizzard Entertainment and um, Activision. I just thought I'd throw that in as well. In the last one, we did we, we made this or found out how to make this um, nice um, cheddar beer. Ah, ch cheddar beer dip. Here it is. But that was the last episode. We are going to learn how to make fry bread. Not to be confused with rye bread. But, um, that looks beautiful, by the way. <laughs> okay, let's see. It says this is an apprentice-level recipe. Prep time is 10 minutes. Cooking time is 20 minutes. And it makes eight fry breads. Pairs well with taco toppings, any hot soup, garlic, and parmesan, or honey, which is all wonderful. It says, this fast and easy recipe creates a tasty bread that is equally delicious with savory or sweet toppings. Each soft bite entices you to take another, making a filling side for any meal. Okay, what you need is two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, three-fourths cup of whole milk, plus more as needed, and vegetable oil for frying. Now, combine the dry ingredients in a medium bowl, then gradually work in just enough milk to make a soft dough that isn't too sticky. Turn out onto a lightly floured surface and knead for several minutes until the dough is smooth and bounces back when poked. Divide into eight equal pieces and roll each out to about seven inches across. In a medium frying pan, heat about one inch of oil over medium heat. Once the oil is hot, begin frying the bread by lowering one piece at a time into the pan. It should puff up and turn golden in a very short amount of time, so keep an eye on it. When one side is done, flip over and fry until the other side is also golden. Move each cooked fry bread to a plate lined with, with a paper towel. Don't stack the fry breads as they might get soggy from the oil. If possible, prop the fry breads up on one edge to allow them to drain more fully. Add your favorite toppings and enjoy. That was fry bread. Now we have this beehive shaped bread, which looks beautiful by the way. Now we have honey bread. And this is a master level recipe. Uh, prep time is 20 minutes. Rising is one and a half hours. Baking, you bake it about 25 minutes. And it makes two small loaves. And it pairs well with butter, jam, and honey. Now, let's see what it has to say about it. Shaped like a hive of the many wild bees domesticated in Eversong Woods, this blood elven recipe does not disappoint. Enjoy it with jam or more honey because you can't have too much honey. That's true. What you'll need is you'll need a fourth cup of warm milk, three-fourths cup rolled oats, one-half cup milk warmed, uh, two tablespoons of butter melted, one-half cup honey, two teaspoons of instant dry yeast, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one egg, and up to, uh, and up to three cups of flour. And it says... Combine the warm water and the oats in a large bowl, letting them sit for five minutes to soak. Add the milk, honey, yeast, salt, and one tablespoon of the melted butter to the bowl. Beat, beat in an egg and then gradually mix in the flour one cup at a time. You may not need all of it until you have a nice workable dough that isn't too sticky. Turn it out onto a lightly floured surface and knead for several minutes until the dough bounces back when poked. Place the dough in a lightly greased bowl and set it in a warm place to rise for about an hour or until doubled in size. Butter the outside of a small mixing bowl, roughly 8 inches wide and 6 inches tall. Set upside down on a baking sheet. Divide the dough into four equal parts. Roll these pieces of dough out into ropes each about 3 feet long. Beginning at the top of the Overturned bowl, coil one rope around itself, 
working your way outward and down the bowl. When you reach the end of the first piece, pinch another length of dough onto the end and continue coiling, forming a beehive shape. It's fine if your dough doesn't reach all the way to the baking sheet when you're done. It will expand as it rises. Cover the dough oh yeah, cover the dough lightly and allow it to rise again for about half the time as before. Preheat oven to three hundred fifty degrees Fahrenheit and once the bread has risen again, move the baking sheet to the oven and bake for around 20 minutes or until the outside of the bread is a light golden color. Brush with the remaining tablespoon of melted butter and allow to cool before gently lifting the bread off the bowl. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's beautiful. That was honey bread. Now we have Caldorai pine nut bread. This is an expert level recipe. Um, Prep time is 10 minutes, rising time is 1 hour 15 minutes, baking time is 15 to 20 minutes, and it makes one larger loaf. It pairs well with pasta, with pasta dishes, freshly sliced garlic, steaming chicken soup on page 105. And let's see what it has to say. The night, the night, elves, uh, um, the night elves of Darnassus revere nature, so it is no wonder that their signature bread features ingredients foraged from the forest of Kalimdor. Wild hive honey, pine nuts, and, and mixed herbs. Additionally, it is often formed into the shape of leaves to honor uh, Teldrassil, the world tree. Passed down from the night elves' forebears, this ancient recipe makes for a scrumptious accompaniment to pastas and stews. What you'll need is one and a half cups of milk warmed, one teaspoon of honey, two teaspoons of instant yeast, one egg, four teaspoons of olive oil, one half cup grated Parmesan cheese, one half, one and one half rather, teaspoons of dried Italian seasoning, uh, three-fourths tablespoons of kosher salt, uh, one half cup pine nuts, roughly chopped, um, four cups of bread flour, and one egg beaten for glaze. Now, what you're going to do is, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my position here so I can see better. Okay. I'm going to change my hand here. There we go. Okay, it says, um, Preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and line two large baking sheets with parchment. Divide the dough into three equal pieces with lightly oiled hands. Begin stretching into a leaf shape, roughly one inch thick. Then place on the baking sheet. Use a sharp knife to make several decorative scores, score marks in the dough, cutting all the way through gently spreading the dough apart to widen to widen the cuts. Then let rise for another 15 minutes. Bake for 15 to 20 minutes until the loaves are a nice golden brown color. Remove from the oven and sprinkle with a little extra Parmesan and salt if you like. The bread is best when enjoyed the same day. That was the Caldorai pine nut bread. Let me get a better picture of that. There you go. Next, we have Mulgor Spice Bread. It says here, this is an expert level recipe. Prep time is 15 minutes. Rising time is one and a half hours. And baking time is 25 minutes. And it makes a single loaf. It pairs well with butters and jam, various nut butters, um, and roasted barley tea. See page 208, which we haven't gotten to yet. But this is only page 83. So, this is whether you're enjoying this bread on its own, fresh from the oven, or with a dollop of your favorite torrin jam, you'll know right away that this is no ordinary spice bread, but Mulgore spice bread. It's really that good, which is why it is now enjoyed across all of Azeroth. You need one, one and a half cups of warm milk, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two, table, two teaspoons rather of instant yeast. Mulgore spices, one which is we can know it, which is um, one half teaspoon each of ground cardamom, ginger, cinnamon, pinch each of ground cloves and mace. Uh, you need one teaspoon salt, two tablespoons butter melted, and three cups of flour. Now it says oh, this is beautiful bread, by the way. There, let me get a better view of that. 
in a medium-sized bowl, combine the warm milk, brown sugar, and the yeast and allow to sit for around five minutes until frothy. Add the spices and salt, followed by the butter and half the flour. Gradually add the remaining flour until the dough comes together and pulls away from the sides of the bowl. Tip the dough out onto a lightly floured surface and knead for a few minutes until it bounces back when poked. Um, place in a lightly greased pan and cover with a tea towel. Allow to rise for around an hour or until doubled in size. Pinch the dough back. Punch the dough back down. That's fun. Work on that that one-handed punching thing that there used to be an achievement for. Um, preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, pulling the sides of the dough. Gradually shape it, uh, shaping it into an oblong loaf. Place it on a sheet of parchment paper and top, oh, on top of a baking sheet and allow it to rise for, 50, for 30 minutes. Using a sharp knife, slice a few decorative marks on top of the dough and bake for about 25 minutes. And then there's those decorative marks. That's wonderful. Next we have red bean buns. And let's see what we got here. It is a master level um, recipe. It's prep time is 15 minutes. It takes one and a half minutes to rise. And you cook for 18 to 20 minutes. It makes about 10 buns. It pairs well with wild fowl ginseng soup on page 111, which we are not to yet. It says, these unusual little buns aren't just a pretty addition to a table setting. They are also delicious, packed with a soft sweet bean fill bean filling that makes them difficult to stop eating no wonder they are lily storm stout's favorite snack um she was cute too um one half cup milk warmed you need two tablespoons of unsalted butter melted two tablespoons of sugar one tablespoon instant yeast one egg separated uh one fourth teaspoon salt two cups of flour, half an 18-ounce can of sweetened red bean paste, one teaspoon sesame seeds or poppy seeds. Okay. Combine the warm milk, melted butter, and sugar. When the mixture is warm but not hot to the touch, add the yeast, followed by the egg yolk and salt. Gradually work in the flour until you have a mixture that pulls away from the sides of the bowl. Turn out onto a lightly floured surface and knead for several minutes until the dough bounces back when poked. Place in a greased bowl, cover, and let sit somewhere warm to rise until doubled in bulk, about an hour. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Punch the dough down and break off pieces roughly the size of a golf ball. Uh, press or roll each piece out into a flat circle about five inches across. Place a dollop of bean paste about a tablespoon in the center of the dough and carefully fold the edges of the dough up up and over, pinching, pinching to seal the paste in. Place each bun seam side down and oh, on the prepared baking sheet, pressing gently on top to flatten them slightly. Repeat with all the dough and press an indent into the middle of each bun using sharp scissors or a knife. Make five slits radiating out from the center of each bun. Brush the bun with the remaining egg whites and sprinkle a few sesame seeds around the indents of the bun. Cover and allow to rise for another 30 minutes. Once the buns have risen again, bake for 18 to 20 minutes until the tops are golden brown and puffy. Remove from the oven and allow to cool before enjoying. And that they are beautiful, by the way. They are beautiful. Next we have soft banana bread. I remember making tons of this. Um, let's see, it says um, it's an expert level recipe. Prep time is 10 minutes. Baking time is one hour. It makes one loaf and it pairs well with breakfast of yogurt and granola or afternoon tea. The sweetest treat ever found in Sholomance, and just the thing to help you face whatever trial lies, uh, whatever trials lie ahead. But but pace yourself. Too much soft banana bread is known to be unkind to a necromancer's figure. For those of you who don't know, um, Sholomance was an undead school, a, ne uh, a necromancer school, I believe. Anyways, 
Uh, one fourth cup, uh, you'll need one fourth cup unsalted butter, melted, one third cup granulated sugar, two eggs, two ripe bananas, mashed, one half cup buttermilk, two cups flour, two teaspoons baking powder, one half teaspoon baking soda, pinch of salt, and you'll need two teaspoons diced, uh, diced candied ginger. Um, frosting, you'll need four ounces of cream cheese softened. You'll need one fourth cup unsalted butter softened, one half cup confectioner's sugar, one tablespoon milk, chopped walnuts for garnish, and that's optional. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and grease a 9 by 5 inch loaf pan with, uh, with butter, then dust with flour, and then you set it aside. In a medium bowl, cream together the butter and sugar, add the mashed bananas, um, eggs, and vanilla extract, stir vigorously to mix, add in the remaining ingredients, and mix until you have a smooth batter. Empty into a prepared loaf pan and bake for about 50 to 60 minutes until the top is a golden, uh, dark golden color. Remove from oven, let cool for 10 minutes, then turn out of the pan onto a cooling rack and cool for the rest of, uh, cool and then let cool the rest of the way. While the banana bread is baking, prepare the frosting using a hand mixer on low, blend together the cream cheese, the the butter, oh, and the butter until light and fluffy, and add in the confectioner sugar and milk. Set aside until banana bread is complete. Cool before spreading on top and sprinkling with walnuts. And that's beautiful. Up next, we have the sweet potato bread. Oh, that looks good, too. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. And let's see what we have here. It says here, this is an expert level skill recipe. Prep time is 15 minutes. Baking time is 2 hours. And it makes one loaf. It pairs well with the with chai tea and apple butter. That's wonderful. Moist, dense, and richly flavored with an array of spices, this popular North Rend bread would be tasty on its own, but topped with caramel and crunchy nuts, it is absolutely decadent. What you'll need is, and this needs quite a bit of stuff, one pound sweet potatoes, about two medium potatoes, uh, one fourth cup whole milk, one cup dark brown sugar, two large eggs, one half cup canola oil, one teaspoon of vanilla, one teaspoon holiday spices, see page 19 or episode one, uh, one half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking powder, one half teaspoon baking soda, one and a half cups of flour, butter for greasing the pan. And the topping, you'll need two tablespoons salted butter, one half cup light brown sugar, packed, one fourth cup heavy cream, warm, one fourth teaspoon kosher salt, dash of vanilla, dash of bourbon, which is optional, and one fourth cup walnuts or pecans, roughly chopped. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit using a sharp knife. Pierce the sweet potatoes several times, then place in the oven directly on the rack. Bake for about an hour or until they are cooked through. Remove and allow to sit until they are cool enough to handle. Turn down the oven, oh, turn down the oven temperature to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and lightly butter a 9 by 5 inch loaf pan. Scoop the sweet potatoes out of their skins into a medium bowl and discard the skins. Add the milk and roughly mash the potatoes until they're is no large pieces left. Add the sugar, eggs, oil, vanilla, and spices beat to beat to combine, oh, beating to combine. Add the dry ingredients, scraping the sides of the bowl to make sure everything is incorporated. Pour the batter into the loaf pan. Bake for about an hour or until a toothpick poked into the middle comes out clean. Allow to cool for at least an hour, then run a butter knife along the side of the pan and gently invert the pan to tip the bread out. Allow to cool on a wire rack until the bread is no longer warm to the touch. If you like, you can top with caramel and nuts as below. Topping. In a small saucepan over medium-high heat, whisk together butter, brown sugar, heavy cream, and salt, bring to a boil, uh, should take about a minute, then reduce heat, simmer for five minutes, whisking frequently, whisk in vanilla or bourbon, if using, and stir, stir
after, then remove from heat and and stir in the butter. Allow to cool for several minutes so the topping doesn't turn uh, doesn't run off the bread. Spread the caramel over the cool the cooled bread, then sprinkle with chopped nuts. Enjoy. And that is the sweet potato bread. And we are now we are to soups and stews the way of the way of the broth. And we have on here bean soup, which is on page 93, clam chowder on 95, dragon breath chili on 97, golden carp consomme on 99, lukewarm yak roast broth on page 101, and that's where we're going to stop our video, spiced blossom soup, steamed chicken soup, steaming goat noodles, Westfall stew, wildfowl ginseng soup, and yuping soup. And just for reference, there's some of the selections. And we are ready for bean soup. That looks beautiful, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful bean soup. Okay. Okay, now, this is an apprentice recipe. It takes 15 minutes to prep. Uh, you soak the beans for 12 hours. It takes two, uh, one, two to three hours to cook. And it makes eight servings. It pairs well with the beer-basted boar ribs on page 117. And we are not that far yet. So, let's get this started. Popular dish among the night elves of Kalimdor, this thick and hearty soup will sustain adventurers and innkeepers alike. It says what you need is uh, two cups mixed dried beans, about one pound, eight cups of chicken broth, uh, two smoked ham hocks, uh, one teaspoon dried marjoram, not not to be confused with margarine. This is marjoram as in the spice. Um, Two tablespoons, two tablespoons of cumin. Um, one tablespoon of olive oil. One leek, w white with pale green part, chopped thin. Uh, two cloves of garlic, minced. Two carrots, diced. One celery rib, one celery rib, diced, and salt and pepper to taste. Okay. Next we have. So and then what you're going to do is. Okay, place the beans in a large bowl and fill the bowl with water. Soak for 8 to 12 hours and pour off the remaining water. Place a large pot over medium heat. Add the beans, chicken broth, ham hocks, marjoram, and cumin. Uh, cook the soup uncovered for around 2 hours. If the beans are soft, move on to the next step. But do not continue cooking. Oh, but if not, continue cooking for up to one more hour. In a medium frying pan, heat the olive oil over medium heat. Add the leek and garlic. Cook until soft and fragrant about five minutes. Add the carrots and celery along with a splash of water to, or broth. Watch out for, for, splattering, for spattering oil. Cover and cook for another 10 minutes or so until the vegetables are soft. Stir into the beans and serve hot. That is the bean soup. Up next we have the clam chowder. And this is always a favorite. Clam chowder. And what we have here is, uh, this is an apprentice level skill um, recipe. It Prep time is five minutes, cooking time is one hour, and it makes four servings. It pairs well with um, rustic bread, spices, uh, spicy cured sausage, uh, versicolor treat on page 191. And let's see what it says. When it comes to tasty, clam chowder is, oh, when it comes to tasty, clam chowder Oh, when it comes to tasty clam chowder, it's hard to find one better than the classic dish from the origi than orig than originated with the human fishermen of Westfall. This soft this soft pork provides a rich and rich a richness and complete uh, complements the classic seafood aroma and flavor. So the balance is just right. So I guess you put pork in it too. Cool. Okay, let's go on. You'll need one and a half. Yeah, salt pork. Salt pork. Okay. One. You'll need one fourth pound of salt pork, diced small. You'll need two medium sized potatoes, peeled and chopped into bite sized pieces. You'll need one large shallot, chopped fine. One teaspoon of fresh or dried herbs such as thyme or marjoram, etc. A pinch of black pepper. One 10 ounce can of baby clams. Two cups of fish broth. Water to water to cover. 
uh, water to cover, which is two to four cups, one cup of milk, one handful of crushed water, water crackers or plain breadcrumbs. You'll need two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour. Line the bottom of a large saucepan with the diced salt, salt pork. Now put the layers. Now put a layer of potatoes on top of the salt pork. Then sprinkle. Then sprinkling of onions, herbs, and pepper. Then a layer of clams. Pour the fish broth over. Then add water to cover. About. Uh, then add water to cover by about a half an inch. Bring the the chowder to a simmer, cover and cook for 30 minutes, then add the milk and crackers and cook for another 10 minutes. In, separate, in a separate pan, melt the butter, add the flour, and work together into a paste. Cook for a few minutes, then gradually add a ladle or two of the, of the chowder broth, stirring quickly to combine into a thick, soupy paste. Pour this back into the chowder pot and cook for at least another 5 minutes to allow the chowder to thicken. Stir hot with extra crackers on the side. And that was clam chowder. Dragon breath chili. Ooh, wow. That looks wonderful. And then there's a dragon there. <laughs> I remember dragon breath chili. Okay, this is a master layer level um, recipe. Prep time is 15 minutes. Cooking time is 2 hours. It makes 8 servings. It pairs well with the cornbread biscuits on page 69. I think that was this episode, but I'm not sure. It was either this episode or the last one. Anyway, while this chili is unlikely to make your, bre your breath flames, it lives up to its name in all the other ways. Thick and flavorful with just enough of a bite to satisfy, it's a hearty dish popular, uh, popular with melee type, types who credit it with giving them, them a fighting edge before important battles. The original recipe comes from the swampland of Dust Wallow Marsh in Kalimdor, but this version is a little different. No dragons were harmed in the making of it. Okay, what you need is two tablespoons of vegetable oil, one chili pepper minced, jalapeno or any others if desired, uh, two Thai, Thai peppers minced, one dried chipotle pepper diced, one half onion diced, one pound ground beef, one pound Italian sausage, one pound chuck steak, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon each cinnamon and cocoa, uh, over six ounces, over, oh no, one six ounce can of tomato paste, uh, one 12 ounce bottle of beer, uh, two cans of beef broth, two 15 ounce cans of chili beans, uh, two 28-ounce cans, diced fire roasted tomatoes, and grated cheddar cheese for topping. Now, it says, add the oil to a large stock pan over medium heat. Add the peppers and the onions, then cook for about five minutes or until brown and soft. Add the ground beef, sausage, and chuck steak, stirring until all the meat is browned another five minutes or so. Add all the spices followed by the tomato paste, and stir so that the paste and the spices are evenly distributed. Pour in the beer and the beef broth. Then add the beans and diced tomatoes. Lower the heat to, the, to a simmer and cook, uncovered for about two hours, until the chili has thickened somewhat. Scoop into a bowl and top with cheese. Cook's Notes. This recipe is on the middle side of dragony, but I encourage you to amp up the spice level to your own preference. Also, choose a beer you like, but one that isn't too hoppy. Now we have Golden Carp Consumé. And we've got two to go, and we are running out of time. That's fine. Golden Carp Consumé. That's beautiful, by the way. Let's see. This is an expert-level recipe. Prep time is 30 minutes. Cooking time is 20 minutes. It makes four servings and it pairs well with white wine, a salad of crisp greens, and fruit. It says, don't fret if you can't seem to hook the elusive golden carp. This recipe works just fine with any fish broth. Quick to make, this soup is flavorful and just the right amount of filling. What you need is four ounces of matzo ball mix. Uh, you'll need 32 ounces of fish broth. You'll need two shallots. You'll need 
one half cup of chopped carrots, one to two cloves of garlic chopped, several sliced fresh, oh, several slices of fresh ginger, one egg, several threads of, uh, of saffron, and scallions for garnish. And scallions, I think, are those green onion things. Begin by making the matzo balls according to the directions on their package. In a separate medium pot, combine the remaining ingredients except for the scallions. Whisk for about a minute to break up the eggs and then bring up to a low simmer and cook for about 20 minutes. Remove from the heat and strain enough uh, strain through cheesecloth onto, into a clean bowl, keeping only the broth and discarding the rest. Add the cooked matzo balls and serve warm. And we are to lukewarm yak roast. That looks beautiful. This is an expert level recipe. Uh, prep time is five minutes. Cooking time is two to three hours. It makes four servings and it pairs well with a Bloody Mary or spicy cured sausage. So let's see what this says. C contrary to its name, this dish is actually delightful when served hot. Previously enjoyed only by those who had climbed the Kun Lai summit, this flavorful, fortifying soup can now be made by anyone with the skill to combine these simple yet complementary ingredients. What you'll need are two cloves of garlic minced, one leek washed and chopped small, uh, one pound beef chuck roast, uh, 12 cups of water, one half cup soy sauce, one half cup mushrooms, one handful fettuccine pasta broken in half, uh, salt and pepper to taste, dash of sriracha sauce to taste, and hard-boiled egg is optional. Uh, combine all ingredients except the mushrooms, pasta, and seasoning into a large soup pot. Bring to a boil, then reduce heat to a gentle simmer. Cook for at least two to three hours until the meat starts to fall apart. Remove from heat temporarily to shred the meat into bite-sized pieces with a pair of forks. Return to heat, then add the mushrooms and reduce the heat to low. In a separate pot, boil salted water and cook the pasta. If the pasta is cooked in the main pot, it will absorb too much of the broth until the pasta is tender about 5 to 10 minutes. Drain the pasta, then add it to the main pot, ladle into soup and, um, no, later in, uh, ladle into bowls and serve. Top with a hard boiled egg, slice in half, and that's optional. In the next episode, we will start with the, sl the spiced blossom soup, which actually looks really beautiful. Anyways, uh, this has been a reading from World of Warcraft, the official cookbook by Chelsea Monroe Castle. Again, if there is a copyright issue, let me know about it, and I will take the video down immediately. If you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. Also, if you want to support me in any way, all that information is in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.